Now welcome to Unit F and this will be about simultaneous localization and mapping which is the topic that gave the slime lecture its name. Now let's have a look at what we did so far. So here's our robot at a given position having a certain orientation and we also know there is an error associated with position and orientation which we expressed as an error ellipse and a disk segment both depicting plus minus one sigma. Now our robot moved and the inaccuracies in the movement induced an increase in error for both the position and the orientation. And in the filter, this was also called the prediction. And we noticed if we go on like that, we will have an ever increasing error ellipse. But fortunately, we had some landmarks in the scene with known locations. And by measuring the distances to those locations, we were able to correct the position of the vehicle. And after that correction, we also obtained a smaller uncertainty for our position and heading. And this here was also called the correction step. And now for this correction step, it was essential that we have those landmarks, which lead to those measurements, which in turn give us a better estimate for the position and decrease our uncertainty. Now for the implementation we did so far, it was essential that we knew the coordinates of those landmarks in advance. And if these were available, we solved the problem using, for example, the extended Kalman filter approach or the particle filter approach. Now what happens if we don't know the landmarks in advance, which is actually the usual case, because it is very hard to get hold of cadastral maps or floor plans. And even if you manage to do so, you will often notice that they are not very useful for localization because the buildings have been built in a different way or they have been modified later on. Or there are so many additional items like chairs and tables that are not part of the floor plan, but make up a huge portion of what the robot sees. So now let's think about the following. I put my robot somewhere, and since I don't have a map of landmarks, I will have to produce that map on my own. So since I start with an empty map, I can define the robot's position to be in the origin and the orientation to be along the x-axis, and I can pretend the uncertainty in position and heading to be zero. Now the idea is as follows. Sitting there, the robot sees some landmarks. And so, as in our case, the laser scanner measures both the bearing angle as well as the distance. I can use those measurements to define the landmark positions in the real world. Meaning in the world that has its origin in the start position of the robot and which is oriented along the heading of the robot at the start position. And now after having defined those landmarks, I will do the very same as in the previous case. So the robot moves along, it increases its uncertainty, but then it also measures the bearing angle and distance to the landmarks which is defined. And using those measurements, I can correct the robot's position and orientation. And thus I will also get a smaller error ellipse and a smaller uncertainty in heading. Now this looks simple. Instead of taking the landmarks from a map, which was obtained by some external means, I do the following. Whenever I see a landmark for the first time, I determine its position relative to the map which I currently build up. And I enter this as a new landmark, which then can be used subsequently for the localization of my robot at all subsequent positions where the landmark is also in the field of view of the robot's LiDAR. Now it is not exactly as easy as that, because when we see the landmark for the first time, our measurement of the bearing angle and the distance induces an error of the landmark position as well. And later on, say in that position, I see this landmark for the first time. I am not only having the angle and distance error, but I also have the error in the current position of the robot, which add up to an even larger error in the position of the landmark. However, if I move on, I will observe this landmark once again. And so having multiple observations, the error in the landmark's position should also decrease. And so what becomes clear is, I cannot simply put a landmark into my map when I measure it for the first time and then assume that the landmark position is correct, I can only put it into my map with a certain error and then as I move on and measure that landmark over and over again, update this error just in the same way as I am updating the position and orientation of my robot. So previously in our extended common filter implementation, our system state included the X position, Y position and the theta, the heading angle of our robot. And now, doing the SLAM version of the extended Kalman filter, we have the following. We still have the robots X, Y and Theta, but we also have 
X and Y of landmark 1, landmark 2, landmark 3, and landmark 4. So these also become part of our state vector. What you see now immediately is our state vector doesn't have constant size anymore, but for each landmark which we observe and which we didn't observe before, our state vector will grow by two elements. Now let me ask you the following question. Say our robot starts in 0, 0 with heading 0, but I feel uncomfortable with the idea of assigning a 0 error to the position and orientation, and so I'll just give him a large error in position and heading. Now the robot will observe some landmarks, and since the position error is large, the error ellipses for those landmarks will be large too. But now as I move, I will observe those again, and so all those error ellipses will get a bit smaller. And now the question is, let's say I move for a real long time in this area, observing those landmarks over and over again. And so my hope is that those error ellipses will get smaller and smaller until they are really, really small so that the landmarks are not uncertain anymore, so that the situation is equivalent to what we had in our earlier extended Kalman filter approach where the landmarks were assumed to be error-free. So what do you think? Will the error of the landmark positions go down to zero as the number of measurements by my robot goes to infinity?